So you bought the Logitech C920, maybe even the Brio, and you turn it on and it looks like this. Before you return it, let's turn on the lights. See how much better that looks already. I'm Saucy and I help new streamers level up their content. Just a quick message before we get into this, guys. Subscribe. Thank you. The biggest thing that you can do to improve the quality of your camera is improve your lighting. There's a reason why this saying is lights, camera, action instead of just camera action. Very few cameras look good in low light, guys. And to prove this point, I'm going to turn off all of my stream lighting and just turn the overhead light on so that you can see the difference. This is a DSLR camera and it looks like garbage right now. <laughs> Big mistake that a lot of new streamers make when they get a webcam is using the overhead light. Now this is designed to light your room and it works really well for its intended purpose, but when you're filming, you need to light your subject and your subject is you. There's a ton of different ways that you can use to light yourself, but today we're gonna talk about the three point lighting system because it's one of the easiest lighting systems for a streamer to set up. I wanna start by looking at this diagram of a three point lighting setup. So we start with a key light behind the camera and this is our brightest light. We then have a fill light to the side, which is half the brightness. And finally, we have a bag light behind us, which is about half the brightness of the fill light. Now key light, fill light and back light, they're just names for positioning of the light and the temperature of the light. You don't need to go out and buy an Elgato key light to do three point lighting. Totally do not recommend any Elgato lighting. Elgato makes some really great products, in particular the Elgato wave which is the latest elgato microphone that is really good their lighting has some of the most inflated lighting prices i've ever seen the only real benefit of elgato lights against other lighting is that it will integrate with the stream deck which honestly you don't need because you're not really going to be adjusting the temperature of your light in a lot unless you're streaming in various different lighting situations also the way that this works is on 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi so anyone who has a dual band router which is most people in the UK are going to find that this system breaks a lot. And this is the same reason, guys, why I don't recommend the LifeX beams behind me. They break all the time. So let's take a look at my lighting. I'm now going to experience how little space I have inside this room. <laughs> I have two panel lights, a ring light, but also this super, super duper cheap USB ring light. I don't actually need this extra USB ring light, by the way, guys. This is just a bit of a relic. And what this actually does for me is it gives me a little bit more light in the eyes so that I don't have to have my main key light on too bright. Panel lights that I use guys are by a company called Switty. They're basically a cheap version of Olgato key lights. They do come with this remote that adjusts temperature and brightness. And two of these lights plus a smart plug actually cost half the price of getting two Olgato key lights. Having a smart plug lets you switch your lights on and off from either a mobile phone or from an Alexa. So all you have to do is set the lights to the temperature and the brightness that you want and then turn them on with your phone and then you're all sorted and set up to stream. So this is my key light, which is as close behind the camera as I can get it. My camera isn't actually there right now as I'm using it to film, but it normally sits about there. This is my brightest light and I adjusted the warmth a little bit as a very white light can make you look a little bit ghostly. Uh, to the left, I have another panel light, which is my fill light. And you can see that this is a little bit dimmer. And behind me to the right, I have a ring light, which is another relic in myself. When I started streaming, all streamers had ring lights. But since this is on a tripod, I decided to use it as a back slash side light. My backlight is actually probably a little bit lower down than you might want yours. The reason for that is I stream in a black chair wearing a black cardigan. So it's the only way to get this shoulder to not completely blend in with the background. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is turn all these lights off and then turn them all on one by one so that you can see the difference that that makes. It is now nighttime and my camera is struggling so hard. Starting with the key light as my camera adjusts. This is our main light source and this puts a lot of light onto the front of me, highlighting my face. Until recently, guys, I actually only ever used a key light, but the real problem with this is that it's really hard right now, especially because my key light's quite dim, to pick me out from the background. I look like I have no arms. 
Nice. I'm going to turn off the key light now and we'll take a look at the side light. Now, this looks really, really, really dim and like it barely does anything at all. But what this actually does is it highlights the left hand side of my face. This is what my overhead light looks like. So you can see that it's kind of highlighting my hair. But mine is a little bit lower down just so that I can get this shoulder highlighted so that I don't blend in. And once we put all of these lights together, you can really see the effect that they have in combination. So let's talk about what lights you should buy. If you're on a budget, a softbox is a really good place to start. And this is one of the first lights that I ever bought myself. These lights are just one big bulb with a diffuser screen across them. There are a few caveats to these lights. The first being that you can't actually dim them. The only way to reduce the light would be to bounce it off a wall. So shine the light at the wall and then it would bounce back. But they're already quite soft. That might not be the best method. Another big caveat with these lights, and this is a particular problem for streamers is the heat of the bulb. Now, if you're a YouTuber and all you want to do is record a video, these are a great light source because you're not going to have them on you for very long. If you're a streamer and you're streaming for like four to, I don't know, like how many hours you stream, four to 12 hours, then it's going to be hot in that room with those lights on, especially if you have three. The final caveat and the reason why I could not do three-point lighting with softbox lights is the size of them. Anything with a tripod takes up a lot of floor space. I cannot physically fit three tripods into this room. I did try. I personally had to get something desk mounted for my setup, which is how I ended up with panel lighting. Now, LED lights, so that's panel lighting and ring lighting. They normally let you adjust both the brightness and the temperature, and brightness is the most important thing. They're also much, much cooler to sit under for longer periods of time. Some panel lights, guys, also do come with desk lamps as my panel lights did. The real caveat with panel lighting though is it costs a lot more. My two panel lights that came with desk lamps cost me around about 200 pounds so that's sort of 220 230 in dollars i do feel like you do play a little bit more if you want a desk lamp what i'm going to do guys is link you to a reddit post where another streamer actually made desk mounted panel lights for their stream using parts that they bought on amazon and just putting them together these worked out very slightly cheaper than the panel lights that i bought but one thing that i would say is that he used a pretty expensive actual panel light you could probably do this cheaper if you weren't too worried about like temperature of light if you just wanted brightness adjustment. Ale Level also actually made a video where he made Elgato key lights from scratch. So if you're on a really, really small budget, guys, definitely recommend that you go and check that out. I will pop a link down to that in the description below. As you can see, guys, even with the lighting on, our Logitech C922 is still not looking as good as it could. And two of the big problems with all Logitech cameras is the autofocus and the auto white balance are just really, really bad. The autofocus is going to cause your camera to keep jumping in and out. And the auto white balance is going to cause your camera to sort of jump between blue shades and red shades, which is not what you want because the light in your stream room is probably going to be consistent. So I'm going to show you guys how you can turn these settings completely off. What you have to do, guys, is select your camera from the Logitech website and then just hit more over here. Then go ahead to download, scroll all the way down, go into show all downloads. Then you've got to choose your OS and then scroll down a little bit more until finally we find the camera settings software. So just download that for your camera. Now, once that's downloaded, we are going to want to change some settings. Anti-flicker is what it says on the tin. It stops the screen from flickering. If you're from the United Kingdom, you're going to want to set this to 50 hertz. If you're from America, you're probably going to want to set this to 60 hertz, but just try it and see which one works better. Then if we jump over into advanced, we want to just turn off auto focus immediately and then also turn off auto white balance. I'm going to go back over to the Logitech camera so that I can just adjust the white balance whilst I'm looking at it. So let's just tweak that up so that we're a more kind of natural looking color. Now, Logitech cameras are kind of weird in that when you first put them into OBS, they don't actually go at full screen resolution. For some reason, they crop down a little bit. To fix this, and I've already set this up, we want to set this to custom resolution and then set the resolution size to 1920 times 1080. For frames per second, I normally just set the highest that's available on the list there color space again the highest and for color range we want full color range if we just hit okay there and then we're going to move on to our fill 
filters now i'm going to add the filters to a scene but you can absolutely add filters to your source as well so if we just right click and then go to add filter so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to add a lot now a lot is basically color correction but with a lot less work because someone else has already done the color correction for you and the lots that i am going to recommend that you use are actually by gaming careers and i will pop a link in the description down below so that you can go to his website and download those once you've downloaded those and applied the look filter you just need to browse over to them now the look that you use is going to be really personal to you and your setup and what your room looks like i think that the cane filter is probably the one that looks the most natural my skin looks a more kind of orangey color rather than bright white we are going to need to saturate this a little bit because it is looking extremely washed out so to do that we're just going to need to add in a color correction filter and then if we just saturate this a little bit that'll just take out some of that whiteness now we don't want to oversaturate it because if we do then let me show you what oversaturation looks like it looks very silly i'm just going to tweak up the contrast a little bit as well because we're still looking a little bit washed out this is what our logitech looks like with no filters on now if we turn on our lut and our color correction you can see that it's a much deeper stronger color and i think this looks so much better now you don't need to return your webcam i hope that you guys found this video useful if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe and drop me a comment i do try really hard to reply to all of my youtube comments you guys would like to come and chat with me in person about streaming ask any questions that you want answering feel free to stop by my stream i stream every friday saturday and sunday over on twitch link in the description box below now that your camera and lighting are spot on it might be time to tackle your audio the good news is that i have a video on that one you can find that over here i'll see you over there bye guys